and welcome back to another trucking video. This is the seven days leading up to Devon Truck Show. So I'm going to be going through everything I do the week before from the prep, the weekend before, polishing, will it stay clean, will I make it back, full stresses and strains of the week before a truck show. It's Devon Truck Show next week so I've got back on Friday night to the yard and I have dropped my trailer and I'm going to give it a bit of a clean up and I'm not going to put it in for judged because I know it's not up to scratch but I am going to give it a good clean and try my best just to make it look respectable for the sake of the show. It's not going to be perfect this year, not like other years, last year and the year before. I was really pleased with how my truck looked but this year is not going to be the same. I've kind of accepted that, <laughs> I just don't have time. But anyway, the first thing that I'm going to do is um, clean the fifth wheel. So I'm just going to get all this off before I go on the wash, just to make sure it doesn't splatter everywhere or splatter all over the floor on the wash. Okay, he's shaking his head at me. He's shaking his head at me, so I'm on talking. Noisy. I get it off is with a cooking spatula, cake spatula, and quite a few uh, degreasing wet wipes. Here goes. Yummy. Well, it's now half past day and I'm still waiting for the wash, but my fifth wheel is a lot cleaner, which is good. I've uh, gone all in underneath and got all the grease out. So as you can see, it looks a lot better than it did before. Well, I'm finally on the wash and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to TARDIS, which I am going to spray all over the bottom of the truck where the tar's flicked up and it's stuck. Some Red 7, which is like a brake dust getter offer. I don't know. <laughs> Remover. <laughs> and I've got some G101. Um, not in the right bottle g101 and that will go all inside the chassis to get all the uh dirt off well i suppose also i should do like a before and after but to be fair my truck was clean on thursday it's now friday and i've had a shower of rain i've loaded in a dusty shed i've been for a quarry so it's not brilliant but I will show you the before and then tomorrow when I've finished, I will show you the after. It is a bit gutting really that this was only washed yesterday, but it's just how it goes with the weather and the type of work that we do. Once I've let the product soak in that I've put on, I will get the pressure washer and blast off all the dirt because I don't want to rub the dirt into the paintwork and scratch it. It's now getting quite late and quite dark. Um, I've got Meguiar's Ultimate Wash and Wax and I've put that in a blue bucket and I'm going to use the ladder and just wash everything from top to bottom, all the paintwork. I can't really see anything now because it's so dark, but I can hopefully get at least a bit cleaner. For washing the truck, I'm basically using a combination of a mitt and a little brush to get in all the cracks and crevices. So I've done one little side and I'm gonna do the front and then the other side. Once I've finished the paintwork, I will use the remainder of the wash and wax mixture to do each individual wheel and then blast it off with the pressure washer. I will also take my side skirts off so I can clean in behind and also it's easier to get underneath. I've done all the washing that I'm going to do tonight. I would have liked to have done it in the light because I'm pretty sure that I'll wake up tomorrow and I'd have missed loads of stuff but 
unfortunately it just happens like that sometimes so I'm gonna park up go to bed and go for it in the morning I actually parked it in the workshop last night as I was a bit worried it was going to rain and I really wanted it to dry off so I could polish. I also backed my car into the workshop because I needed to get my ladder out and the only way I can get the ladder into my car is by taking the roof off. There are quite a few of us in the workshop today polishing our trucks. We do have the music on in there to keep us going all day and it's not for me to tell everybody to turn it off. In fact, it's quite a nice atmosphere, so I'm happy with that. But I'm just gonna video some stuff and explain over the top because YouTube don't like the whole music -y thing. I'll give you a, a tour round and you can see some of the other trucks at Wayne's. On the right, we have a Volvo FH500 and that is the Golden Hind. And then on the left, we have the Titanic, which is a R500 next gen. Then behind the FH, we have a Scania V8 R580, and it's a Pirates of the Caribbean one with Captain Jack Sparrow, and this is the flagship. It's got a tag axle, twin stacks, and it's airbrushed all over. And then we have mine, which is the Scania Next Gen S500. And it's got Davy Jones from the Pirates of the Caribbean on the back with the Flying Dutchman. Then we have Rachel's Death, which is a XF530. This one doesn't have a picture on the back as it was bought second hand. And there's Chris cleaning the front of the V8. Then Dean offers me a cup of tea, which of course I say yes to. And then we have another Duff XF here, which is Farmers. I've got all my cloths and cleaning products out in a row, just so that they're easy to get hold of whenever I need anything. Oh, thank you. The first thing I did was take my side skirts off and use some white diamond on the tanks. Then I used a finishing wax and put that all over the cab by hand and then went over it with the polisher. As I go around with the cloth, I'm just making sure that everything is clean before I put the polish on. You can also see how busy everybody is in the background as well. As drivers away all week, we don't get to see each other very much. So it's always nice to do these sort of things and have a bit of a catch up. As I'm using the polisher, you can see the difference that it makes. Unfortunately, because of the shape of the polisher, it doesn't get into all the nooks and crannies. So I do that separately with a cloth. Next up, I clean the windows with rain -X. Then I use a dressing for the wing tops and I use the same product on the tyres. I use a ceramic coat on the Durabrites to make them shine and give them some protection from the elements. I've been up and cleaned my roof with some white diamond on the air horns and some cobalt on the paintwork. Then I polish the back of my cab with some white diamond blue pearl. Then I use some cobalt in and around the fifth wheel on the paintwork. Then I use cobalt to clean under the back of the tractor unit just because that's something that you'll see especially with no trailer on. Then I polish my catwalk with some white diamond blue pearl and I use my drill with a polish attachment on it to finish it off. 
I didn't realise how dusty I was from lying under my truck until I seen this back. Everyone's gone now except for me. Um, I'm the only one left here. Now I can run through with you without the music on in here, all the products that I used today. So uh, the paintwork, I used a uh, Meguiar's detailing finishing wax and I used my dual action polisher for that. Um, it's a Das V26. So dual action polisher, it doesn't just polish around in a circle, which can sort of, if it's sat in the same place, can make a mark. It sort of oscillates, um, which is better for the paintwork. For the um, wheel arches and the tires, I've used a white diamond multi-purpose dressing, which I find a really, really good uh, tire dressing. And it's a really good all round cleaner. At Devon Truck Show, when I park up, I will use a tyre gel, which is a Meguiar's one as well. For the Jura Brights, I used um, white diamond ceramic coat. For the back of the cab and bits of other paintwork, I used uh, white diamond blue pearl. White diamond do some really, really good stuff. But what white diamond are most famous for is their metal polish, which I just don't think you can beat. I've got the the metal polish and the high shine. So on the tanks, which are actually covered up, but you can just and just see a tiny bit of them. I used the white diamond high shine. White diamond high shine. And the glass cleaner I used today was a Rain-X one. I really like Rain-X. I've just used it for a long time and I really like it and that's kind of what I stuck to. Auto Glim do a really good glass cleaner as well. I have created a bit of a mess, which I will clean up, but I might do that tomorrow because it's probably about 10 o'clock now. And um, I think I'll go to bed. I'm gonna stay down here tonight. I'm gonna clear everything up tomorrow, put everything away, go home, do my washing, do everything that I need to do ready for next weekend. <laughs> and I've had a good sleep, which I definitely needed. I was feeling a bit um, overtired last night. So I'm up and awake now, even though I look pretty bedraggled. Um, but I'm just gonna clear up my stuff, sort out the bits I need to take next week to Devon Truck Show, and I can take home the rest and just put out the way. Uh, but I'm just gonna show you the after, because I showed you the before of, um, before I washed it. So I'm just gonna show you the after. I have realized that I do spend a lot of money on cleaning products and maybe other people won't want to spend so much. And I'm just wondering if anyone would fancy a video of a cheaper guide on how to clean your truck and what products to buy as a beginner, maybe as like a first truck show and you're not really sure whether you're going to enjoy it or invest in it. So if you would like a video like that, then drop me a comment and let me know. Other years what I've done is I've tilted the cab and I've actually laid on my back underneath the lorry cleaning all underneath but this year I don't really have time to do that as well I just needed another couple of weekends just to get it all sorted out um, I'm not gonna put it in for judged anyway I just want it to look decent for the truck show for the people who's paid to come and have a look round. as I'm about to leave Dave turns up with his own truck it's a 4 Series Scania 164 V8. Dave is the one on Wayne's Transport that drives the S500 with the bull bar. He bought this one last year and actually went to look at quite a few trucks. And there was one blue one that he just and just missed out on. 
You may have even seen it on somebody else's YouTube channel. I think Dave did pretty well with this one though. All my stuff out of my truck for the week and I'm just gonna take my car out. I'll come back, get the unit and hitch up ready for, well, it's gonna be Tuesday morning because I actually have bank holiday Monday off. First thing I do is check in that the pin's in and the safety clip's on. And then because I have cleaned my catwalk, I am not going to stand on it with my boots on. I connect all my Susie's, my Anderson lead for my electric sheet and my tip pipe. And then I have to get down and get my feet back in my shoes. Then all I need to do is wind the legs up. This should do quite well coming through the yard by the looks of it. It's really difficult in this yard because you've either got um, a dry day where it's really dusty, the dust flicks up onto your lorry when you've only just washed it and cleaned it and polished it, or when it's raining. There's so many puddles that you end up getting your truck dirty from driving through the puddles. So it is really difficult. So how do you win at a truck show? Because obviously my lorry looks really, really clean, but it's not just about what you can see. It's about what you can't see as well. And that is what will make you win or not win. And don't get me wrong, you could be lucky and nobody else enters or it could be a small show and you've got less competition. But in the category that I am in, I know that I'm gonna have massive competition. There's no point me pushing myself to get my truck to a standard that's not really achievable in the time that I've got. The things that the judges would look for, the extra little details, are things like underneath everything. They run the hand under bits and pieces, under the um, side skirts, things like that. They look all in the nooks and crannies and crevices. They will even look <laughs> inside of your Durabrite holes and they will put their fingers in well, that's not too bad, actually. I, we'll, tr we'll try one of the front ones because <laughs> I'm sure that will um, come up black. So I've put my, my fingers into the holes. Yeah, completely black. And that is one thing that might determine the winner from Highly Commended. Now what am I gonna do with that? those little things so if it's really really close the judges will go around for a second look and pick out all those little tiny details and different judges will have different things that they personally look for and will think that are important and it could be the difference between you winning and not winning you might look around the other truck that's won and think I deserved it more because I cleaned this bit and they didn't but it's down to what the judges are personally looking for. And I think if you get to the point where they're coming round to have a second look, then you've kind of won anyway, really, because it's that close. So if you work for a company that has the truck in the weekend before, taking all the wheels off and going around the Durabrites at the back or the wheels at the back, and you can get rid of that brake dust, you've got more of a chance of getting somewhere. But if you don't, You've got to get your fingers in and try and get as much of that dirt out as possible um, or get in behind the wheels and try and get as much dirt out as possible. And also, if you've come a long way for a truck show, obviously you're going to have more, more brake dust behind the wheels anyway. So it's harder when you haven't, when you, it's harder when you've had a long way to go. It's a really difficult thing actually to win a truck show, especially the likes of um, Peterborough when they're, where there are so many trucks. To be honest, I wouldn't want to be a judge because there's so many people that put in so many hours of effort that actually I wouldn't want that on my head. I was in the yard quite a while because um, me and Dave just ended up having a really good chat and stuff, which, you know, you do need when you're away all week and you don't really see anybody. It is nice to have a catch up with people. Uh, but I just popped into Tesco's on my way home. Um, it's about half past 12 now. I'm going to go and get something nice for me and Ryan for tea. He's been on a golf weekend all weekend this weekend. So I think it'd just be nice to both just sit down and have a really nice tea together. I'm home now and I ended up getting stuff to do a spag bowl. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is get everything washed for the week, including these clothes. So I'm going to go up and have a shower and I'm going to wash up all my Tupperware that I've had all week. I've also got all my cloths to wash from polishing all weekend because I will need them at the show next week. And I've got my bedding as well that needs washing. On bank holiday Monday, we got up, done the dishes, made sure all our washing was completed, tidied the house a little. Then because we hadn't seen each other all weekend, we went and had a big fry up. Then we popped into the range to get some camping chairs as we remembered that ours broke last year. We went and got the food shop for the week and got some goodies for next weekend. And then we popped into Ryan's mum and dad's pub for an apple juice. And then we went home and made sure everything was packed up for next weekend. Well, it's Tuesday morning and it's 4.15. I'm just getting my stuff in my truck. I've got everything ready for Devon Truck Show with me. And after cleaning my truck all weekend, I am now going to a quarry. I'm just gonna put my stuff away and then I'll go. I make my bed with a fresh bedding that I washed this weekend and I put all my food into the fridge and everything in the cupboards where it needs to go. I have a bit more stuff than normal as I'm prepared for the weekend. I do my daily checks and fill out my paperwork. Well, that's all that done, so it's off to the quarry. I get to the quarry and this is what I'm greeted with. So as you can tell, with the state of the floor, my lorry is no longer clean. This load is headed for Forley. So I got up at half past two this morning to get on to make sure that I can have a good week and I've spent the last two hours ringing around trying get, to get this delivery done. Um, no one seems to want to answer their phone or sort anything out so I've just been sat here now for an hour and a half. Been ringing for about two hours so yeah not a good day. I finally get tipped after a long wait and then it's across the new forest to New Milton. Avoiding the animals on the way through and giving them a wide berth. The quarry at New Milton isn't as bad as the one that I went to this morning. And this load is heading across to Kingsbridge. I get some quite bad rain on the way across and in fact some parts of Devon flood. I finally get over to Kingsbridge after a really bad trip across and I'm nearly out of time. Well, that's Tuesday over with and I'm so glad it's over. I've done nine hours 47 driving and i've managed to get to kingsbridge to tip eventually i had a bit of a disaster on the way down to kingsbridge i was nearly at the place where i was tipping and the road was closed and there was absolutely nowhere to turn around nowhere at all i ended up backing up miles then i managed to get into a farm because somebody said oh my brother's got a farm and I went up into this farm and I literally had to drag the trailer around the banks to get it in and out. But I, I got in and out and I got turned around. So then I had to go all the way around um, back into Totnes and all the way around back through Modbury to uh, tip at the quarry. And I've parked up not very far away from the quarry because I've only got 13 minutes driving left and I won't get anywhere else. I was hoping to get tomorrow's load on so that I had a clear run up tomorrow but that hasn't happened in fact the complete opposite and actually I feel a bit behind now because I'm not very close to the quarry that I'm picking up from tomorrow and I kind of wanted to have really good days where I could maybe go out and do a bit on my track but it is raining spitting at the moment and to be fair I'm in such a tight lay-by so down this side, it is really close to the hedge, so I can't get into anything. There's stinging nettles and stuff down there, and the other side is literally right on the road. So, yes, don't think I'll be doing anything in here. That was a nine hour, 47 drive and a 14 and a half hour day. It's Wednesday morning, I have had a good night's sleep, so it's off to a quarry near Plymouth on Dartmoor. I'm up fairly early, so it's a nice, quiet, pleasant drive across. Until I get to the quarry and I'm driving through this. My truck's pretty dirty from yesterday, but I still don't want to add to it. I get myself loaded and this load is going to Stockton-on-Tees in County Durham, North Yorkshire. 
but first I must take this trailer back the yard, drop it and pick up another trailer so that I can do a local load. I dropped the trailer on the hard stand in because it's loaded. If I dropped it up on the yard, the legs would sink through the ground. I put the brake on, wind up the legs, take the number plate off, take the Susie's out and undo the clip and pin. And then I hitch up to a new trailer and I do it all in reverse. Then I put the engine on and I check the lights and condition of the trailer. And I also remind myself about how all that work that i done at the weekend has been undone. With this trailer I'm going down to the coast near Bridport between a village called Swire and Littoncini to pick up a load of feed wheat. The roads are quite narrow and windy down here but I know them fairly well because I used to pick up milk down this area when I first started driving. It's not long before I'm in the farm and I get turned round and loaded straight away. Are you ready for the show, Davy James? Well, he's winking at me, so I reckon that's a yes. And one good thing is that my roof is still looking pretty clean. I'm loaded in no time. And this load is going to Uffcombe, so I head in that direction. I get a quick pit stop in Taunton Dean petrol station and I see one of my old colleagues, Alan Quarterly. I have a short wait at Uffcombe to tip, but once I'm tipping it will only take about 30 minutes. And then it's way out, paperwork and back to the yard. where I unhitch the spare trailer and hitch back up to my loaded trailer. I don't hang about doing this as I know if I get on, I've got the full potential to use a 10 hour drive. I do however have to stop for half an hour break, which is good because I can get a shower in as I didn't get one yesterday. And I even managed to get the jammiest spot in the truck park as it's the closest walk to the services, bar the coach bays of course. And now I'm gonna have a quick tea, which I made on Monday. This week I've got a lovely salmon salad. Well, it's eight o'clock and I'm finally parked up in Castle Donington. Um, I've run out my time, so I've done nine hour, 53 hour drive and I've done a 15 hour day. I'm parked up in a place where I've been told that I can park and I've come in around the industrial estate and I've really, really struggled to park. Parking in the UK is so hard, it's unbelievable. and. I got asked a question the other day, do I ever worry about my safety when I park up? And I was like, no, it's the last thing on my mind. I'm just worried if I can park up at all, anywhere. I'm not in an ideal spot, but hopefully I'll be all right overnight. Probably a sleepless night, worrying that I'm in the wrong place. One thing that I did do tonight was wipe around all the inside of my doors and the inside of my side lockers ready for the show. I've had exactly nine hours off and I'm going to make my way up to Stockton on Tees. It's about two and a half hours up there from here. I need to be really quiet doing my daily checks because I've got lorries all around me. I don't want to wake anyone up. And then we're off on the journey up to Stockton on Tees. The journey takes me about three hours in the end because I get stuck in traffic at Roadworks, but I'm straight in and tipped. My trailer needs a good sweep out because I'm off to Hull next to get a load of wheat distillers. I might have to take the sunshine back to Devon with me. This week we've had loads of flooding down there. I'm off to Hull and that's about two hours, so I'm going to have to have a break before I get to Hull, unfortunately. I stop in Weatherby Services on the way down and even though it's early, I stop for a shower because I don't think I'm going to have another chance today. I'm definitely wearing my flip-flops in this one. So I've got myself a wrap, because um, I'm quite peckish, and some chocolate peanuts. And it's off to Hull, because I have no minutes left. <laughs> and there's the Humber Bridge in the distance. I could have come across in a couple of different ways, but because of road closures and the traffic at morning rush hour, this was the most sensible option. I'm loading out of a different place than the last time I loaded at Hull, um, but I'm still picking up wheat distillers and it's on the dock side. 
I've had to wait about 15 minutes to get loaded, but it's not too bad really. This load is going to Yeovil, but I won't make it there tonight because I only have three hours driving time left. I have a rough plan of where I'm going to park tonight. But that all goes wrong when there's heavy traffic on the M42 and I have to divert off and try and find a lay by somewhere. I'm parked up quite early but I have run out of driving time and I did want to get a bit further. It's another night in a lay-by on a busy road. <laughs> ah. Which means another night of not doing anything to the truck but to be honest it's so dirty it would be worse for me to actually try and clean it at the moment. Because I need to carry so much AdBlue to get me through the week I have no room for water so it makes it really difficult for me to clean my truck. The one good thing though is that I can start super early tomorrow. Is that a good thing? <laughs> I had a really good day yesterday in terms of loading and tipping, even though I did have to park up early because I'd run out of driving time. That meant that I shaved a couple of hours off of a 13 hour day. I had to have 11 hours off last night so that I can use a 15 hour day today. So it's now quarter past three. Quick check around the truck and we'll be off to Yeovil. It should be around three hours down to Yeovil, as long as I don't have any hold-ups. When I get onto the M5, it's down to one lane and it's 40 miles an hour, but because it's so early, I don't get held up. Then I stop for a drop of fuel in Gordano Services and I get a bit of fuel for myself as well. I hit the jackpot when I get to Yeovil as there is no one on the pit. This is exactly what I was hoping for today. I get myself weighed in and sampled and then I just need to back onto the pit. I was a little confused when I first got there because the building that we normally go to the Weybridge office had been knocked down. Even though I could see that the staff here were really busy, they still came out straight away and sorted me out to get me on the pit and tip in as quick as possible, which I was really thankful for today. I'm not sure exactly what I've got next. All I know is something to get me back towards the yard. And I'm just hoping and praying that I don't get any holdups as I only have until quarter past six on my taco. And in this time, along with the load back towards the yard, I need to wash the truck, have a shower and get down to Devon Truck Show. I always find the week before a truck show quite stressful as you never know what's going to happen. And I've had occasions where I've not made it back on the Friday night for the show. Luckily, so far, I've had a really good day and I'm tipping already. That's it. I'm tipped. I'm swept out. I'm weighed out. And I have a load out of Hentstridge, which is only half an hour away. I'm here now loading at Hentstridge and then this load is going back to Clumpton which is where our yard is. So that's me home and ready for the show. Well, that's it, I'm back the yard and it's time to wash off. I'm amazed that I've got this video out this week with all the show prep and everything else, but I am so glad I did. I am so grateful for everybody's support over the last few months starting up this YouTube account. I'm glad I spent the time doing the video for you guys because I want to give you something back because you've given me so much support. So thank you very much. And I will see you on the next video, which will be the show video.